Hello everyone, welcome to Motor on Beat Beat. My name is Alan and today I'm at the London Cemetery and Crematorium for a quite a moving one about the character called Joseph Merrick. He was later known as the Elephant Man and of course David Lean made a film of, of it which was very powerful um, and it starred John Hurt as the Elephant Man. If you've not seen it, try it, it's a very good film. Joseph Merrick was born on the 5th of August 1880 and he was uh, quite a normal child in the beginning, no deformities but when he reached the age of five suddenly it started so he was going to have a very hard life really coming up. The problem he really had that really knocked him back was when he got to the age of 11 his mother died, now he was very close to his mother and she protected him and when she died his life imploded because his father was very cruel, he got remarried and I'm afraid his life just went downhill. They, they really begrudged him being there. In fact he said when he was a teenager he would start, he would rather be on the streets hungry than go back home. That's how bad it was. So by the age of 17 he decided he was going to leave home. He couldn't stand it anymore and he decided that the only other option he had was to sort of be a hawker and he would go around hawking cigars then later it was haberdashery but the problem was, of course, every time that somebody came to the door and they saw him, of course, they'd be shocked because he looked so bad. Must have been absolutely terrible for him, wasn't it? So at the age of 17, he went to the Leicester Union Warehouse. It was his only option. He needed some food. In 1884, he was contacted by a showman named Sam Tor and proposed that Tor should exhibit him. Tor arranged for a group of men to manage Merrick, whom they named the Elephant Man. After touring the East Midlands, Merrick travelled to London to be exhibited in the Penny Gaff shop, rented by showman Tom Norman. Norman's shop was visited by the surgeon Frederick Travis, who invited Merrick to be examined. After Merrick was displayed by Travis at a meeting of the Pathological Society in London in 1883, Norman's shop was closed down by the police and Merrick joined Sam Roper's circus and toured in Europe. In Belgium, Merrick was robbed by his road manager and abandoned in Brussels. He eventually made his way back to London Hospital. And you know, it shows you how resourceful he was because with all those uh, deformities and the way that he looked, he made it all the way back from Europe on his own and got to London, you know, to try and get back to the workhouse. He had no other option. And they, if you remember the film, that's where the mask gets pulled off in the station and the corner him, and he screams those words, doesn't he? I am not an elephant. I am not an animal. I am a human being. And then he passes out, the poor fella. Terrible. The police came along and they went through his pockets and they found the card for Dr. Frederick Travis. He was a doctor at the Royal London Hospital and he'd taken an interest in Joseph because of his condition, obviously. They rang the doctor up and they took him straight to the hospital. He was given a small room in the basement and uh, yes, he was safe for a while, but the problem was the hospital was there to, to heal people, not as a permanent home. But they did a wonderful thing for him. The head of the hospital actually asked the newspapers to run the story and people sent in donations, quite big donations, and they suddenly thought, well, we can keep him here. He was given a small room in the attic, a special bed which was upright because his head was so big that if he laid down, he would die. And for once in his life, he's got safety and food and somebody to try and care for him. This was a better stage of his life coming up at that point. Must have been wonderful for him, wasn't it? What a terrible life he'd had before that. So Frederick became his friend. The problem was that uh, Joseph could hardly speak because of all the tumours on his face. I mean, they found out later that the tumours were 50% bone and 50% tissue, but it meant that he could hardly speak. But because he, he got close to him, he actually then understood what he was saying and they became close together. He did actually become part of high society and he had some very, very high VIP guests come to visit him so you know he's he's living a much better life and they were trying to help him he developed a hobby for reading 
and making models. I believe one of the models still, still exists. It was a model of a church, it's beautiful. The man was intelligent, he wasn't stupid. He was quite a bright guy altogether, but it was just, people didn't think that when they saw him because of his looks. You know, it's a terrible thing in this world. People judge you by their looks, don't they? Well, a lot do anyway. He seems to have been someone quite celebrated in the upper ranks of society. We know that Princess Alexandra visited him and uh, that he was very, very touched by her visit. Of all his visitors, his most faithful was his surgeon, now his friend. One thing that always struck me as sad about Merrick was the fact that he could not smile. Whatever his delight might be, his face remained expressionless. He could weep, but he could not smile. Merrick's condition gradually deteriorated during the four years in the London hospital. He required a great deal of care from the nursing staff and spent much of his time in bed or sitting in his quarters with diminished energy. His facial deformities continued to grow and his head became even more enlarged. He died on the 11th of April 1890 at the age of 27. At around 3 p.m. Travis's house surgeon visited Merrick and found him lying dead across the bed. His body was formally identified by his uncle, Charlie Merrick. Merrick's death was ruled accidental and the certified cause of death was asphyxia, caused by the weight of his head as he lay down. Travis, who performed the autopsy, said that Merrick had died of a discolated neck, which likely severed his vertebral arteries. Knowing that Merrick had always slept sitting upright out of necessity, Travis concluded that Merrick must have made an experiment attempting to sleep laying down like other people. So when the film came out in 1980, The Elephant Man, the uh, charity that backed neurofibronatrosis suddenly realised that the, there was a way that they could capitalise on the film and get more attention to it and make some money. But it backfired because uh, at the premiere there were lots of people that had that disease that went to see the film and of course they were scared they were going to turn out like Merrick but they didn't, it, it was nowhere near as severe um, and it turns out it, it almost certainly isn't that disease but they thought it was at the time but that uh, it didn't work, it scared people um, it's far more likely to be Proteus syndrome which is more severe, it affects the bones and the tissue and that's probably what Merrick had or they're still not certain but that's more likely or some variation on that. One scientist said maybe it was just the disease that he had. It was unique to him. It was a Merrick disease. And the people who had the disease, neurofibronatosis, suddenly got categorised as being uh, like Merrick, the elephant man. And that's bad for them. You know, these people get judged as they are anyway. You know, people, one lady on the documentary said, people look at me and they look at my face. They don't think anymore. They just think I'm a freak. They don't really care what I'm like inside. It's another case of, you know, judging the book, isn't it, by its cover. Terrible sometimes, terrible, isn't it? Absolutely. So summing up, unfortunately the skeleton couldn't give DNA because it had been bleached too many times initially. The saliva in the cap was too old to give DNA. The soft tissues which had been stored by Dr. Frederick Treves, which would have given all the answers to the problem through DNA were lost in the blitz. But the overall conclusion is that even though the symptoms of his body showed various diseases, the collective decision was that it's probably Proteus syndrome. If it gets any darker, I'll need a floodlight on my head. This is really the darkest I've ever seen. It's partly because the clocks have gone back and partly because it's such a dark and moody day. Okay, we're there. This is the memorial garden. I think we've made it just before darkness. So I'm going to spin you around, then you can approach it with me. And uh, it's the far from the left plot, which is over here. And this is where Merrick's final resting place is. And it's a newish plaque. Should be the first bed. Ah, they are good, these people. There we go. There we are, if you can see it. Hello, Joseph. Nice to be here. You were a great guy, very intelligent. In memoriam, Joseph Merrick, 1862 to 1890. 
Well, at least you had some uh, you had some kind behaviour at the end. There we go. Thank you, Joseph. Tis true my farm is something odd, but blaming me is blaming God. Could I create myself anew, I would not fail in pleasing you. If I could reach from pole to pole, or grasp the ocean with a span, I would be measured by the soul, the mind's the standard of the man. There we go. I mean, that, that just sums it up really, doesn't it? You couldn't judge him by his appearance. He was an intelligent and bright man. And um, that's what the world does too much nowadays. I keep going on about how we all get judged by our appearance, but you know, your trick is don't let it bother you. You are what you are. Your qualities are your qualities. We all have them. So let's enjoy our lives and not other people. Don't let other people spoil it just because of what they think. If they're so small minded to, to um, think they've got to look the perfect person to be happy, well, that's a shame for them, isn't it? Okay, everyone, thank you for watching today. It was a, another sad one, but it had positive aspects to it, didn't it? I mean, he did enjoy the last little bit of his life. And he was an intelligent man, and he got trekked with good humanity at the end. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss future films. They're all free, and yeah, I want you to see them if you want to see them. And a thumbs up and a comment would be great. So let's all be happy on this very dull and overcast day. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye from Ian at Motor on Beep Beep. Bye-bye.